Good morning. All right. Look at, would you look at this Virgo? This is a weird Virgo, you guys. These are two people. This is a, this is somebody who came to me that I met years ago through Flat Earth and then sent me some info. So I did their chart and then they've met someone. So they want me to see and point out some things about how these people get along. Okay. So this is the person, this is the man, and then this is his girlfriend on the outside. So right away, I see one of the most, this is one of the best things to have when you are a man and you have a sun in that sign. If you meet a woman with the moon in that sign, it's like a sacred marriage, they call it, where the outer expressions of Virgo are all covered by the man and the inner expressions of the Virgo are all covered by the woman. So she feels absolutely in tune with that Virgo. So that's one of a really good thing to have. And then it's moon, her moon is right by your Mercury too. So that conjunction is an, a very empathic feelings one where she can feel you out, you can feel her out, what you guys are thinking, and you guys are just really good at communicating with that. So that's what that Virgo party means. So you're a Virgo, you got Mercury and Virgo, and then she has Moon and Virgo, which is really, really good. That's very, very good. The reason I said you're a weirdo Virgo is because look, you have Aquarius Moon. So Aquarius is very different from Virgo. Virgo is earth and solid and reliable, and Aquarius is air. <laughs> and blabbery and blows around all the place. So even Virgos are annoyed by Aquarius. So when you have this, this is, you're born right before the full moon. It's this really rising, peaking moon, this huge moon that likes to get out and meet everyone and be social and do social things. And sort of this more shy, inner, introverted sun in Mercury. So it's it's weird. It comes out weird because sometimes you'll be all wow we yay and then sometimes you're very inner. <laughs> so and that's like how I am too really. All right, so go we'll go around your sun in Virgo, you have moon in Aquarius, and you have Mercury in Virgo, and then you have Venus in Leo. And this woman has Venus in Aquarius, the start of Aquarius. Okay, so that one's interesting. She has a, she has the the same sign as your moon, so you might get each other that way. Your Venus is Leo. Your Mars is Gemini. Oh, this one's really cute. Look at this one. Okay. Your Mars is Gemini. Okay, you have Sun in Virgo, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Leo, Mars in Gemini, Jupiter in Leo. Oh my God, that one's really cute too. Okay, Jupiter and Leah. <laughs> Just thinking of all these things about these charts together. And and um, and then your Saturn is here. And she is a Capricorn. She's got Venus in Aquarius. She's got Mercury in Capricorn too. She's got, uh, see, Uranus and Neptune, they make it look like there's a lot more Capricorn, but I don't really use those for personal luminaries. So she's got Sun. Mercury and Saturn and Capricorn for her personal luminaries. And then she's got Mars and Sagittarius. Now, how do these guys get along? So this man has Virgo sun right here and she's got her moon there. Her moon is, look, this is moon by Mercury over your second house. So this might be always thinking of ideas to make money and build security and build value with you and also since she's a Capricorn I wouldn't doubt that she's very business oriented and would be very good at it and her son is right by your Saturn so that one can be kind of hard that one's kind of weird I have that with Mr. Gem here well he has Saturn opposite my son but it is similar so what it is is the Saturn person so that's you that's you Mr. Virgo the Saturn person my, it might feel like to the other person that the Saturn person is putting some sort of authority on them and restriction to, to what they can do. 
and it will just feel like that naturally. You might not be doing anything, you're just being yourself, but she might feel like sometimes he's so restricting and he's not letting me do this, or I can't, I don't feel like I can do this in front of him or something like that. But there's gonna be a lot of that overall because Capricorn it acts like that. Capricorn is painfully aware of what everyone else is doing and they think other people are pa as painfully aware as them, so they they worry a lot about how they're coming across. But Virgo gets Capricorn. Virgo and Capricorn get along really well. So even though your son, even though her son is right by your Saturn, you have all this Virgo getting along with your Saturn, so you don't have a, a grumpy Saturn. You're not really bumming her out too much. It's just sometimes you're going to feel like restricted together, you know, like kind of shy a little maybe together sometimes. Okay, and then her, she is a cat. With all that Capricorn party, she's got Mars and Sagittarius, and her moon is over here in Virgo by yours. What else do we have on here? Up there. Nothing. Okay, good. All right, so temper things aren't really here. I don't see much temper. So that's like your um, Mars is Gemini, and her Mars is Sagittarius. Okay, that is a little bit of temper stuff. So. You guys have opposite drives, so to have a Gemini is movement and new bits of information always flowing in all the time, and it makes you movement-oriented when you have Mars and Gemini. That's you, Mr. Virgo. You have Mars and Gemini, and it can make you moving around a lot and not being able to set, to set roots and work on the earth, so that's what it will seem like, and... It, that's also weird to have when you're a Virgo and you have Mars and Gemini. That's very weird. And Moon Aquarius. It makes you very movement and intellectual oriented and moving around a lot for new ideas. And her Sag is the opposite. It's kind of like the matured version of Mars and Gemini is Mars and Sagittarius. The matured version of anything Gemini is Sagittarius. The opposite of Gemini is Sagittarius. So that one can cause some arguing sometimes because person is a little immature with their drive. This person is sort of like, I'll show you how to do everything, don't worry. <laughs> and Capricorn's already naturally like that too. So regard to be a man Virgo with a woman Capricorn. Capricorn women are kind of bossy. They'll kind of try to boss you around sometimes. And that's why her moon of Virgo really will help too because she, she'll she be like me where she's really cardinal strong and she will see that and she won't want to boss you around too much. So even though she might still, she's she also has this moon here so she can tell it's affecting you and she doesn't, she's aware of it, you know, if it's bugging you so she won't want to annoy you too much even though it might still seem annoying sometimes when she's doing it that's just Capricorn Capricorns are really good you should listen to them for a lot of things because they have great business ideas and great drive to get a business made so yeah look these things up more like Sun and Sun and Virgo Mercury and Virgo Moon and Aquarius Mars and Gemini Venus and Leo, Saturn and Capricorn, Jupiter and Leo. Look those up more. And then for her, you have the list there. The list was right. Okay, so her Venus is zero or one degree Aquarius, and your Mars is one degree Gemini. That's so cute. That's another thing like this. When you have when she has moon by your sun. And she's the woman, so it's even better. And here she has Venus by your Mars, trying your Mars, see? So this is like another one of those sacred marriage things where these signs absolutely get each other and work together really well. So her sign of love and pleasure is in an exact trine to your drive, to this Gemini collecting bits of information here and there, and 
and putting it here and there. And see, the problem with Gemini, it's not a problem, it's just the way Gemini is, is it's hard to get roots and settle. So when you have a lot of earth, it's way easier. So she will be stabilizing for that, you know? She will have ideas that will calm you down and she'll listen to the ideas of yours too sometimes. And you guys will get in depth with them. So these two work very well together. She's going to seem a little bossy to you sometimes and it might not even show yet. She might not she might not be comfortable around asserting her dominance yet. <laughs> But that's what I'm talking about when I say Capricorn Sun is a, a boss sign. They're a boss sun sign, and Virgo is like the end of the season mutable sign, changeable, adaptable. And they're a bit, they can be a bit of a pushover to Capricorn. And what I notice is what happens. And hello, girlfriend, if you're listening, I'm, I don't mean to sound mean at all. This is just what I've noticed through everyone else I've ever met. So Capricorn, they will... They're really good at everything. And sometimes they're, they will be always pointing, Virgo, why don't you do it like this? You'd be, it would be better if you did it like this. And that can seem bossy, you know, like, but it doesn't, it's, it isn't. It's just that Capricorn's really good at certain things. So you should listen to Capricorn, but at the same time, not feel like, don't make it let you feel like she's just bossy. She's, she's not, she's got her, sun in, in, a, in a more mature spot than yours for certain things. So she understands things differently from a different season. And she can point and say, Virgo, look, in winter it's more organized like this. It looks more like this to, to be your own businessman. It looks more like this, Virgo. And you should, you should, guys should really communicate well with this moon there. And yeah, look up this one, Venus, Trine, Mars. Sinistry, because that one's very good. And what else we have? We have beginning of Leo. Okay, so you also have your Jupiter opposite to her Venus, which in it's it's the opposition. So you'd think it's bad, but it's not. It's actually one of the best things you can have with Venus and Jupiter. So look up Venus opposite Jupiter. Sinistry. Oh yeah, anything involving Venus and Jupiter, Venus and Jupiter between two people is longevity and it's understanding and it's growing wisdom together. It's really nice. That one's nice. Her Jupiter sits over your house of groups and friends, which means she will want be wanting to get into involved into your house of group, groups and friends. And she brings growth to that for you. Maybe she makes you get out more with your friends or something. Or she's trying to get you to come out to groups more so she can be part of it and see what it's like. All right, the hard ones. Where is the hard one? You guys, this is very easy, really. Oh, I found a hard one. Okay, so Mr. Virgo, your Mercury is square her Mars. So that is a lot of arguing actually that's not a very easy one to have and i also have that one with mr jim here and what it is is this mercury in virgo will be very detail oriented thinking and you know they'll have their lists and they're like trying to figure everything out and they don't want to they're not very rash or anything they're trying to slowly go through all the details and then there's her Mars, and her Mars is like, hurry up, why are you, why are you doing that? Why do you gotta do that? Why are you taking so long? What, say what you mean. These kind of things will happen with Mercury square Mars. So Virgo will just be <laughs> trying to come to a thought maybe, you know, trying to come to a whole thought, and then the Mars will be like, hurry up, spit it out. What are you gonna say? Say what you wanna say, that kind of thing. So. When there's tension, when there's hard astral weather up in the sky, this one could be affected. And I want you to look that up. Mercury, square, Mars, sinistry. Because everything else is, other than this, her sun is cardinal to yours, so she's going to be a bit bossy there. She's going to be a bit bossy here. Everything else is nice. And yes, I will openly say that. That's what it looks like to me, that she's going to be bossy sometimes. 
But what happens is with Capricorn, sometimes they're so painfully shy, they're so painfully unaware that they're so good at everything. It takes them a while to know exactly why they should be showing Virgo things. You know, they they might be still unsure, and it might just come out as to put being um, pushing someone around. You know, I just don't think that it's very strong in her yet but it could grow over time to where she sees all the weaknesses of Virgo and then and then is like, all right, now you basically have to let me run your life because I know how to do it better than you. That can happen with Capricorn and Virgo. But really, Vir Virgo will never stand for that because Virgo has Aquarius moon. It's like freedom, you know, freedom. No, you can, you can try to Capricorn boss me all you want, but I still have this freedom. And so she she might have been slowly poking at that already, and then she sees this part in you that's like, no, freedom. <laughs> freedom. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know what you guys want to know. Okay, so, yeah. Look that stuff up more. So since her son is over your sixth house, oh, well, that's good. This is actually good because her... Her natural leading skills to that will seem bossy to Virgo eventually, they're actually over your sixth house. So that gives you an advantage. Where That's Virgo's house, the house of service, and she's of service to you somehow. So that's actually a step down to being more balanced with somebody who has a cardinal son when you have a mutable son. That's, that's good. So she's got this house with her son with this house so she's of service to you her heart is of service to you and that should definitely tone down the whole i'm better than you i'm cardinal and you're immutable and i don't think virgos maybe realize how good capricorns are at things they're very naturally in tune with everything she's got massive business leading skills like boss material she's kind of bringing you along for the ride with it she she will want to naturally make business with you and you guys have the same saturn so that's good because that means it's not really hard aspecting anything else other than the, what it is already in both your lives yeah and it's very business oriented so i wouldn't be surprised if if the two of you are are always sort of scheming to make a business and thinking of new ways to expand the business and stuff like that. That's very earthy, it grows together. You can think of it like, you can think of it like earth signs have a huge garden plot together and they can grow whatever they want because they have all this stability and solid earth to get these things grown together with. You're a Virgo with Moon in Aquarius, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Leo, Mars in Gemini, Jupiter in Leo, Saturn in Capricorn. She's a Capricorn with Moon in Virgo, Mercury in Capricorn, Venus in Aquarius, Mars in Sagittarius, Jupiter in Saturn, Jupiter in Cancer, sorry, Saturn in Capricorn. So you can look those all up later. And look up Mercury square Mars. This is an arguing aspect. It's temper and it's one of the only ways you guys have problems getting along. Look that up. ASAP. ASAP, boss. Mercury square Mars. But the lucky thing is, is they're both mutable signs. So they both change for each other. So Virgo and Sagittarius are very easy to get along with each other. So they, they will change and adapt to each other and not not argue too much. Everything else looks really good. It does, it looks solid and like you grow together and you understand each other and grow much love here with this Venus opposite Jupiter. It's a ever expanding love journey. If you can handle all the cardinal, <laughs> which I'm sure sometimes you can't. And I'm sure sometimes she can't handle the mutability of Virgo where Virgo is very indecisive. You ask Virgo something, and they're like, hmm, huh, hmm. 
What Capricorn's like, yes or no, answer my question. <laughs> Hurry up, answer. And that might take a few years to come out, but it will eventually. It will eventually show that she's a natural cardinal and you are the mutable. 